Has there ever been something that challenged you that took a little bit more time than in the past? No. Come on. <laughs> Mike. Drop, y'all. We working with a a, a star. <laughs> do y'all know we talk? Do y'all know we have to take a commercial break? <laughs> we had to take a commercial break. Do y'all know who we talking to? That's what she said. <laughs> she said, "You know who you talking to?" <laughs> it's not like that. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Post in Black, where we celebrate Black excellence behind the lens. We want to thank Dolby, our title sponsor for this episode and helping us out this season. And thank you to our supporting sponsor, Avid, as well. We have an amazing episode for you today. We are thrilled to have with us film and TV composer, and also stage composer as well, just everything, Shonda Dancy. Shonda, how you doing today? I am holding it down. Holding it down. That's what I we think. like to hear. That's how, <laughs> no, I think. That's an honest answer. That's honest. Yes. We 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 appreciate that. Obviously, you know, it's 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 busiest, yes. uh, you know, obviously when this episode comes out, but what a year yeah. has been. Yeah. You know, yeah. life. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. You made time out in your schedule yes. to come see us. Yes. Appreciate you. Got to. You. Got, Got to. to. <laughs> Got to. But we're going to dive in a little bit. Obviously, we're happy to have you and want to talk to you, but we always start with the icebreaker. And, you know, the icebreaker I have for you, obviously, being a music composer, film, TV composer. What instrument do you not play that you wish you could have played or maybe get into over the years? You think about it like, oh, I like this music. I like this sound. I wish I could have played a little bit more here or took this lesson. So I wish that I played oboe or bassoon. Mm. So the double double reed instruments. Yeah, okay. You know, I can pull off, you know, pretty much all the instruments, you know, like yeah. brass is, you know, yeah. you don't like, I mean, for my film scores, I can I can get away with like you know yeah. some really bad trumpet playing, you know, just in Pro Tools <laughs> or something. Uh -huh. But like double double reed instruments, I can't get a sound. Wow. At all. Really. I can't even get air through it, so I'm just like, oh well. <laughs> really. Yes, I yeah. That's interesting. Yes. Okay. I really wish. <laughs> no, yeah. that's you know what, and that's something to check in. I I asked that too. You know, I, I'm I've played music. I played the drum since I was mm -hmm. little, mm -hmm. trumpet, and play uh, piano. Took piano lessons starting the pandemic. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I just was like, oh, so now you know I'm doing a little, doing a little something. You yeah, know, yeah. Doing a little bit. <laughs> yeah. But I always thought I'm like, man, if I could do this, I play the guitar, or do something. Yeah. So those, the, I played the clarinet when I was yeah, younger. Yeah, you know, yeah. that's fun. Yeah, but I have a clarinet. Read, you know, yeah. so. Yeah, yeah, a single read is like, yeah. you can get a, a mm -hmm. decent you tone sound, out of yeah. it if you just practice a, a bit. A double but, read, that's a little mm -hmm. bit, that's can, tricky. Yeah. It's so tr it's so tricky, it's just, it's a, it's a wall. Really? I yeah, I can't even get past it, so. Okay, good to know. Well, when we <laughs> yeah. see you and the, when you have that double read and we'll, we'll remember the day, like, okay, that's what you did in the spare time to get, <laughs> yeah. get going. But but that's, yeah, right? We're going to yeah, be practicing. Still, yeah. Now I'm curious, you know, we, what you do randomly at like two in the morning when you say you're going to sleep, yeah. you're on YouTube looking up how to do that. How to, yeah. yeah. YouTube, I, I've been there. I can't, I just, I can't do it. I, okay. I need like. <laughs> okay. That, a we, master to come down and right. like give me a real lesson, and even then, I'll probably still. We we found the one thing you probably <laughs> haven't been able to do because yeah. obviously in your career, we'll talk about you've mm -hmm. done so many different things, mm -hmm. and we we'll, we'll span that. But obviously, can you tell us a little bit? And found out where you're from, but tell mm -hmm. the people who are watching, listening, where you're from, and and how you even got started in the industry. Oh man, yeah. So I grew up in Houston, Texas. Mm -hmm. um, Born in Cleveland, Ohio, but, you know, moved to Houston when I was a toddler. So I don't, I don't know Cleveland. I started music really, really early. So really? my my mom's mom was a classical musician. Okay. Um, so she taught me piano um, starting around preschool age. Okay. And then um, I guess when I was like eight, I started playing violin, started taking lessons and things like that. Mm -hmm. Started playing in the school orchestra oh, wow. uh, at yeah, that yeah. time. So, so I've been playing in orchestra since I was a kid. So, you know, naturally one thing led to another, you know, you, you start writing little tunes for your orchestra mm. and like writing little, can, my dancey concerto in A minor, <laughs> it was bad, but, but, yeah. but, but, but the title, you know, made it feel important. But anyway, so, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know, stuff like that, like just writing for small ensembles and then wow. like, you know, I decided maybe I should be a music major. And so... Went to Houston Baptist University, mm -hmm. 
tiny, 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 tiny music school. Yeah. There were like 150 students total. Oh, wow. Wow. In, in, well, not the whole college. Just but in, in, the, in, in the, the school. Music, in, in the, the school. music school itself. Music yeah, school. The, yeah. The, whole, the whole university was only 2,000. Like it was smaller than my high school. Oh, yeah, that's so, still... so it was really small. Yeah. 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 So, you know, and then like amazingly had this awesome, awesome education and like mm-hmm. support group who like, you know, helped me try try and reach this dream you know yeah. so 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 it, it's a funny story no 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 yeah I, no, I, no, I, i'll no. share it with you yeah <laughs> so the dean of the school of music was also my composition professor mm-hmm. and so i approached her probably like my sophomore year um and i was like so I want to try and do like this film scoring kind of thing. Like, cause I was on, um, you know, on ask Jeeves. Doc. Come on, <laughs> ask remember Jeeves. Ask, ask oh, we remember ask Jeeves. <laughs> I'm with you. Yeah. Like yeah. film composing, you know, yeah. like, well, what is that? Yeah. How, how do you even, yeah. how do you, you do know? That? Cause I mean, I grew up like, you know, loving like John Williams, you know, Michael came in and, you know, yeah. just these amazing composers. And so I was like, is that a job? Is that, you know, or is that something that, you know, normal people <laughs> Can go and do. So anyway, like, so I, I told her, I was like, I want to try this. And so she actually just got a whole bunch of video equipment and lighting equipment and stuff like that. I directed and wrote my own script, directed, shot like a, a short film and then scored it. So the choir director uh, is best friends with a composer by the name of Morton Lauritsen. Mm-hmm. Morton Lauritsen is the co-founder of the USC Film Scoring Program. Wow. So I just shot a short film and, you know, directed it and scored it. Yeah. Morton Lawrenson, I find out, is coming to my school to give a performance um, with our choir Mm -hmm. um, of some of his pieces. (laughs) And so he's there at the school. And I ask my professor, like, so can you get me a meeting with Morton Lawrenson? Like, I want to I want to like just meet him, you know, because I know he's co-founder of the. USC Film Scoring Program, right. which is like the the school, the right. program, right. the program to go for film scoring. So I have a meeting with him, and I show him my you know lame little short film. But hey, I was so proud of it. But right, right. <laughs> and so and it's yours. Yeah, yeah. I showed him, and and he was like, oh yeah, yeah. I'll write you a recommendation for the program, and I was like. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Like, I was just hoping to like, maybe, you know, pick your yeah. brain. Do I have like yeah. some sort of potential? But anyway, um, fast forward, I'm in the USC film scoring program and it, and it, it all germinated from that tiny little school in which the dean <laughs> at the school of music, like lets me just do whatever to my heart's content. I mean, you know? I mean the fact that Morse came to your school. Yes, that you talked about it not having that many people. There yes. being a limited amount of people in the class and the yes. program, and then being yes. a small school. Yes, but then he's at your school. Yes, that's just <laughs> is meant to be. That's, that's what it that's, feels that's like. What it feels, it that's sounds what it like feels it's like. just incredible. And yeah. then you go to USC, yeah. Yeah. and obviously, just that—that's a transformative process. I'm sure being yeah. there, yeah. Um, you know, from your time at USC yeah. to booking your first professional job. What was it like? Um, what was that process like? Because that's that's the goal. I think everybody. We're in school and we're learning and we're having yeah. fun. Whatever you go for. Yeah. And then I don't know if it hits you like it hit me, but it's like a, a, a ton of bricks. We're like, wait, job next. Dude, professional, I like yes. what's happening. <laughs> Senior year was a different year than all the rest of the years. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What was that like for you at SC? Oh, it's definitely the same. Yeah. So, like you know, while you're in the program, you know, you're meeting all of these icons, mm-hmm. and I mean icons. Yeah. You're getting like Thomas Newman, like mm-hmm. coming and speaking to your class. James Newton Howard. Yeah. Elmer Bernstein. You know, mm-hmm. um, rest in peace. Like mm-hmm. came to my yeah. class. Like you know, we had like. David Raxon, we were the last class to have legendary David Raxon worked with Charlie Chaplin. Like this guy, like we're, we're talking about wow. royalty of Hollywood film scoring. You right. Know? And so, you know, you get that in your head and you're like, whoa, whoa mm. you know? Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm yeah. going to do stuff. I'm here, right. Yeah, I'm going to do stuff, <laughs> y'all. I'm and here. like, yeah, yeah. It was, it was definitely a wake up call, like after graduating. 
and like, you know, realizing that I needed to go and like serve coffee for a bit. Mm, I guess. To like make some 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 yeah. money while I'm trying to figure things right. out. So yeah, I worked at an internet cafe. That was my first job mm-hmm. after graduating from USC. Mm-hmm. So talk about like you're on Mount Olympus and you're like, mm-hmm. you know, feasting with the gods almost, or or at mm-hmm. least getting their scraps or like their, yeah. their afterglow, whatever. I don't know. But yeah. <laughs> and then like <laughs> going straight to the village and you're like, oh, okay, oh. cool. Well, let me just start from the bottom. <laughs> oh, I, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it, it can be humbling. You know, I, I had a job. I worked at Bed Bath & Beyond. I, yeah. I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. And I was helping somebody with something. And she's like, you're so nice. You seem to love your job. And I was like, girl, I'm not supposed to be here. I'm an actor. You know what I mean? Like, you don't know who I am. Yes. But I had to support the dream in the yes. beginning yes. of the of the stages. So you you yes. doing that. Um I, I wanna I wanna jump real quick because you talk about being an SC and then mm-hmm. and then having that first job and we'll get back to more, but like if people don't know, you should know. But you, you know, your credits, you know, Whitney Houston, uh, yeah. um, mm-hmm. um, devotion, like mm-hmm. Lawman Bass Reeves, and mm-hmm. we're talking to an Emmy nominated composer. Come on. I still can't believe that. Come on. We're talking to <laughs> Emmy. I, I, I want to talk about that because obviously all the credits that you you have, who is your Shonda Dancy, if you will, coming up? Because this is the field where sometimes we we talk to people we don't really know they are black in mm. these positions behind mm. the scenes. So obviously you love music, but what, then when you're researching Ask Jeeves, mm. is there anybody that you're like, hey, they do that? You know what I mean? Like, or or even if it was just somebody that might not have been black, but they worked in this field where it was inspiring. John Williams, you mentioned all these people coming to your yeah. class, but like, what was it for you? Like, okay, I don't see anybody like me, so I'm going to be that. Or, oh yeah, she does it or he does it. Hmm, I can do it too. 20 something years ago yeah. when I wanted to pursue this there there weren't people that look like me right like doing this at least not like anywhere visible that we'd be able to you know mm-hmm. see um and we're talking about like you know people of color and like women yeah, yeah women and especially for sure especially yeah um However, with that said, I did know about uh, Shirley Walker and Lolita Ritmanis because mm-hmm. I watched all the, the the Superman and Batman cartoons, yeah. and I was just like, oh, you know, like yeah. I did notice, yeah, that, like yeah, there there are women doing stuff. So so yes, there gotcha. there there was at least yeah. that. But the the thing that just you know made me want to just pursue it was just like I I don't know, I just had this deep need to just at least try. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So. Fortunately, I had really good good support early on. Okay. Now, so even before I started at USC, I actually interned with um, Mike Post, the okay. composer of Law yeah. and Order and all oh, of yeah. that. Oh, we know Mike Post. Yes, indeed. Arishka Hargitay. Yes. That's my show. Yes, yes, yes. Come on. That's yes, yes. Yes. What a name, too. Yes. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. So another Mount Olympus mm-hmm. god. Yeah. And like, you know, he... I was able to see like the side, like a, a working composer in the studio, right. like his point of view, his right. life, how he lives and things like that. After my internship, like, so my, I'm a daddy's girl. So my dad yeah. like flew out to LA to like drive my car back to Houston while I fl- fly back. So anyway, mm-hmm. daddy, yeah. daddy comes and like to pick me up from the internship. <laughs> 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 and, like, so we have lunch with my post, um, the three of us. And so he, you know, turns to my father and he says, I just want you to let you know, want to let you know that she can do this. So I think, no, not think, I know, I know that those words have stuck with me through all Mm. of these years. Like Mm. if Mike Post says that I can do this, Mm -hmm. like it doesn't matter if somebody over here didn't hire me because I was a woman mm-hmm. or if I didn't get, you know, this gig, you know, because someone else, it, it, it doesn't matter. All of, any of those no's were so small in comparison to the support and belief that I had from mm-hmm. my heroes. Mm-hmm. Word, words have power. Yeah. When you get life spoken into you at a certain yeah. point, it's like, it's, it's a game changer. Yeah. Even when you face adversity or, or situations that are tough, it, it's just like, Okay, no. And sometimes just that little bit, we don't realize how big it is, you know, yeah, even posting yeah. black being birthed from my brother, 
uh, Terrellin, uh Shropshire was the one and the reason that believed in it. He cold emailed her. Yeah. And we say this all the time, but it's just so, I remember the day we're in Burbank living and he comes back from Warner Brothers and you know, the pastors they give you when you go on a yeah, lot. Yeah, yeah. He's like, I was on a lot. And we just spent like 20 seconds of jumping up and down like, hey, hey you know, <laughs> he's on a lot. And what did you, how was it? What did she say? What? Yeah. And she was like, man, I love what you're doing mm -hmm. and keep it going. And if you need anything, reach out. And that has been something that we've been able to utilize. We just had yes. a conversation with her, just, hey, what? And that stamp of approval, you know, my brother worked in post and I talk about it a lot. I didn't. Yeah. I was more so on the, the on camera yeah. voiceover. And I'm like, well, I'm hosting this show and doing things mm -hmm. and I don't work in post. She's like, well, you can and you have a knowledge of it. You, you can do it. And it's like, okay, so don't walk in fear. And that stamp of approval to go after it. And what you guys are doing is game change. So you meet with Mike Post, stamp of approval. Dad was like, all right, that's all I need to hear. Yeah. That's yeah. done. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. And to like say it to my dad and like, you know, he could tell, like, like I said, daddy's you know, Spoil, yeah. Spoiled little, <laughs> little as, you should, as you should be. You know? As you should be. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. That is that is fire. <laughs> that is fire. What was what was your first job? Obviously, you know, work talk to Mike Post and everything, mm -hmm. but what was your first job out of SC? Mm -hmm. If if you, mm -hmm. you talk about that, was you know, like obviously outside outside, outside, outside yeah. of uh, you know, working at, at the coffee shop. Yeah. yeah. Your first composing job when you got yeah. that gig, what was that like? Oh man. So I was really fortunate in that I made a lot of friends in the film yeah. school. That's important. That's good. Um, so, you know, my first gigs were their, mm -hmm. their thesis films. Yeah. Um, so it was a lot of like thesis films from mm -hmm. USC, even more thesis films from UCLA, ironically. Wow. Like, and I forgot, oh yeah, I do. So I was trying to remember how I, how I <laughs> fell into UCLA, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah. So um, another amazing mentor, uh, Laura Cartman. Come on. Laura Cartman. Yes, yeah, so yeah, I'm dropping the names yeah, here. Like, I'm you know, like, like, man, <laughs> we're going to have them pop. We're showing love. That's yes, what we're yes, doing. Yes, yes, yes. So Laura um, was teaching a course to UCLA film directors mm -hmm. on how to speak with composers or how to work with the composer. And so she invited me to her class yeah. as an example of a composer. Yeah. <laughs> um, and just had me meet directors and talk about, you know, the process that I had learned thus yeah. far. Um, and so... Yeah, I did a few student films from that, and it just snowballed. It was like the editor on that film, like had had their yeah. film, and then so so on and so forth. The actor on another film, like wanted me to you... score. So yeah, yeah. So it was pretty quickly after you know getting out of USC and and just doing yeah. doing this with Laura, just and keep... like then bam, you know, wow. it, like it did keep me busy. Um, Forever. <laughs> yeah. No, Forever. it's still, it's still, it hasn't stopped. Yeah. It yeah. hasn't stopped. Yeah. Literally. I, I'm, I'm going to jump to something, but I want to ask too, has some of your, you know, your classmates and not to put anybody out, but like you have, have you been kept in touch with some of the classmates, Absolutely. obviously, and some of them are probably working in the industry, maybe yes. in different capacities as well. Yes. Isn't it funny to yes. see the journey? Yes. You've it's taken? wonderful. Yeah. It's wonderful. So like, yeah, yeah, and and like one of one of my really really good friends mm -hmm. is going to be doing his first feature, and I cannot wait to talk about it. Oh, but man. it is, yes, that's all right. I'm so happy. That is so great. happy for him, and so like, yeah, that is yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's amazing. So. <laughs> but we'll talk about we'll talk a little bit about that that process. What is mm -hmm. your process like as a composer when you're first getting brought onto a project, mm -hmm. and then we'll talk specifically about some of the the figures that you've worked on in mm. particular, you know, mm. Bass Reeves, mm. Real, Whitney Houston. Well, talk about your process in general. What's that like for you? Music has to be able to tell the story, yeah. you know, musically. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, any any sort of sort of ideas I get are directly from the drama, whether mm -hmm. it's on the script or whether it's like, you know, if I get a rough cut or things like that, and I, mm. I see how the actors are are um, portraying their characters. Mm -hmm. And so um, going from there, I will typically write a piece of music that is a theme 
Yeah. Um, typically, I'll try and do it away from picture. If, if there is picture, I'll do it away from picture. If mm-hmm. it's script, obviously, just right. based on my feeling of the script. And, you know, that'll most likely be the main character theme. And then I'll share that, yeah. you know, with the filmmaking team and kind of like, this, this is this is how, this how is, I'm feeling is about feeling. this character yeah. and about their journey. Yeah, like like for example, for Devotion, the first cue that I wrote was the um, the piece that's called Measure of a Man. Mm-hmm. Um, it's in it for for you out there in, in TV land. It's um, yeah. you know it's the scene where uh, Glenn Powell um, you know mm-hmm. crashes the plane on Man. purpose to save um, Jonathan Majors, right. and so. That piece was the very first scene. That, yeah, wow! Like so, it wow stuff stuff like like that. That's where where I'll start. Like for Lawman Bass Reeves, the main titles um, was the first thing that okay. I wrote. You know, yeah. so yeah. Wow, that's that's now my mind is just running, and you know I have <laughs> questions here, but I'm just thinking about that process, like. Mm-hmm. This just the work and the research goes into it. And the thing that's most consistent, and I had somebody approach um, me, they had seen a few of the episodes, not working in post themselves. Mm-hmm. They said, wow, I didn't think about, and you just don't, but I didn't think about the fact everybody that works in post, they have to be great readers. Yeah. You have to understand yeah. the flow and the story and the yeah. and the core of the script. Yes. Because you think about that as the actor and the director shooting, but the yeah. music is a character in itself. Yes. And understanding pace and passion and where something fits and where it doesn't. Yes. Whew. Knowing when to be loud, when to be soft, yeah. and when to be silent. Come on. <laughs> All of that. That's a message yeah. for life. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That sounds like that's what that's what that is. Man, ask my parents, they'd be like, yes. <laughs> message for life. Oh, yeah, it's so it's so great. And mm-hmm. just even talking about that, I'm jumping again, but you know, you mentioned devotion, law lawman, bass reeves, and, and Whitney Houston. Do you do you feel like added sense of responsibility for telling like stories with historical fiction, because you know a good friend of the show and a good friend of my, Daisha Broadway, yes, obviously. Yes, so like working yes. with your editor and composer. Yes. Can you talk about that? I know we'll talk about oh Long Investor, but talk about yeah. that for Whitney Houston and that, yeah. that film, working with that. Yeah, now for Whitney, yeah. yeah. Okay, for, for, and for Whitney, all- And Whitney, the film, yes, I'm sorry, I said Whitney Houston, yes. so you know, I'm just hyped. Yeah, the but film, yeah, yes, Whitney, yes. yes. Now, now, Granted, yes, for any any project that I work on, especially when it's based on a true story and especially when it's based on someone like who's important to right. the community and right. important to our history. Right. Um, yes, huge sense of responsibility mm-hmm. for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and the Whitney Houston movie was even a notch up, mm-hmm. you know, because um, people who knew her and love her are still here. Yeah. That's true. And they're still affected by anything that's said about her. Mm-hmm. And it was, you know, mm-hmm. um, I randomly met um, someone, and, and I'll keep keep them anonymous. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. uh, I met someone who personally knew her. Yeah. And um, they were scared to watch the film. Mm. So, you know, that sense of responsibility is... You know, I wouldn't say it was heavy. It was just, I understood Mm -hmm. how important it was. That's real. And I took it very, very seriously. Yeah. So, you know, and Daisha took it very, very seriously. And and Casey took it very, very seriously. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. (laughs) You know, like we wanted to elevate her, Mm -hmm. but we also wanted to elevate the people around her. Yeah. Because, you know, we wanted to be respectful Mm -hmm. um, and show love. To the people who who are still here. No, nah, you did. The, mo- the movie was just amazing, and uh, you know our producer, one of our, our main post producer, Tatiana Johnson. Mm. She's based out of North Carolina, but yeah. runs everything. She wanted me to personally say thank you because oh. that for that film, she she <laughs> saw it multiple times. She's a huge Whitney fan, and she's like, yeah. "I'm mad that I'm not in L.A. for this, oh. but you have to tell Shonda like." It's incredible. Oh. Um, and she really enjoyed it. And then you worked again. Obviously, you know, by the time this interview comes out, people mm. probably have gotten to see the film already, but Blink twice. You worked with Naomi again. Yes. What was it like composing for, you know, seeing her again? And you've been able to meet her, I'm sure, and just talk, yes. talk with like, obviously, yeah. like, yeah. what is that like seeing such a talent? She, she's amazing. 
My Incredible, goodness. Right? Yes. Like you get to see so many sides of her and then like you see her in person and she's got this amazing British accent and you're like, wow, there's just so many, <laughs> you, you know, layers, like, yeah, yeah, so many layers. And like, mm -hmm. so yeah, it's, it's, it's so great to score amazing actors. Mm. Clearly. Yeah. They, they make all of our jobs easier. That's <laughs> they real. really do. That's right. You know, yeah. uh, especially like, you know, Whitney, you didn't have to like do too much or so much. It was, you could be restrained mm. musically because the performance was dynamite. And then Whitney's songs, clearly right. <laughs> iconic, you right. know, the most iconic. Yeah. So. What would be yeah. different about your process for a film like that? You talked about being restrained a little bit, but mm. but in terms of like a Blink Twice or a Long and Bass Reed Devotion, mm. Mm. what was it like for that in terms of like your, your responsibilities and coming in with music that's already created? already done, you know, versus maybe crafting something brand new. For yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Can you talk about that? Well, you know, like, so for, for Whitney, it was more like being aware and respectful of the songs. Okay. So this, the score had to seamlessly work. Okay. With the yes. That's makes. So the score was just glue. It was not the star mm -hmm. and it was very, very important. To know that. Yeah. To know that going <laughs> yes. in. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. As opposed real. to like, you know, Lawman Bass Reeves and, you know, mm -hmm. like, yeah, the score is the star, right. you know, of the, right. the the music soundscape at least. Um, yeah. yeah. Right. No, it, it, speaking, <laughs> speaking of, no, that's, that makes perfect sense. And that's really awesome. It's just great hearing that. Mm -hmm. Lawman Bass Reeves, mm -hmm. you obviously are not born in the 1800s. Yeah. <laughs> what is the research like to go into that? It's obviously another historical figure. Yeah. You talked about being from Houston, but this is yeah. another, you know, in the South. And yeah. it's it's really funny how these stories keep coming out that you might not know about. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm like, yeah. I've never been to Mississippi. Yeah. And I'm like, wait, this is, wait, he was the first, what? And then you're yeah. watching. So what was it like for you getting that story and then diving into that world? Well, ironically. Okay. The score for Bass Reeves was... The preparation for that started when I was four years old and became a classical musician. Mm. Because everything that you play was written in the 1800s, 1700s. That's so weird. You know, so the orchestral language is pretty much of the era. So, yeah. for example, so in creating the score, I was heavily influenced by Antonin Dvorak. Okay. Um, uh, symphony number no. nine is called New World Symphony. Yeah. And so you've got this Czech composer who who is in America mm -hmm. and he wrote um, a symphony that was, from his point of view as a Czech composer, that also you, uh, utilized um, Black spirituals mm -hmm. and Native American music. So yeah. in this orchest orchestral piece, yeah. it sounds like the Old West. <laughs> but in an elevated sense. Right. And so, um, yeah, that was actually one of the first conversations that I had with Taylor Sheridan okay. about, you yeah. know, influences the, what, yeah, for, the, for, the, for the, the score and for the, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It. And it was just so crazy because he was just like, yeah, I really love Brahms and Mendelssohn and things like that. And I'm like. That's what that? I was thinking. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was just like, like, those are my dudes. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is what, like, it's crazy, you know, the, so. Yeah, ironically, Lawman Bass Reeves, that score was mm -hmm. just like, to me, it was like home. It was like coming home. Yeah, and w coming home, did you did you ever think going into it? Because obviously you're working with, again, talented actors, mm -hmm. you know, David Oyelowo. I went to a panel, actually, he did over uh, in Westwood by UCLA, and it was a night, it was the SAG Foundation provided mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. But he was just, it was a night with David Oyelowo talking about his career. Yeah. And then that's what really got me intrigued. And Lawman Bassery had just come out. And I was like, oh, man, I got to tap in, yeah. you know, to what's happening. But his, his, um, I guess his commentary on the story, and he mentioned you. Hmm. We, like, literally mentioned you. He was like, no, the score. Because he, he had some say in the production. Obviously, yes. having to put, you know, funding in for it. And just yes. like, you know, he talked about that. And so mentioning you and the score, it was so important. I was like, oh, we have to talk. My <laughs> girlfriend sitting next to me. She's like, have you talked to her yet? I was like, not yet. We're going to. You know, but like, it was just powerful. Number one, Taylor Sheridan Project. Amazing. Right. Number two, David Oyelowo Project. Right. <laughs> Number three, real life Bass Reeves. 
So when I demoed for the show mm-hmm. to get the job, yeah, I went on Wikipedia, looked up Bass Reeves, and there's like actual photos of him. Wow. And so the 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 very first thing that I put up, I put up on on big screen in my studio. Yeah, that photo of him uh, is a portrait, and you can see the soul behind the eyes. I mean, it was a very yeah affecting photograph. And I, so my demo was the main title sequence that you hear currently. Wow. So. Wow. From that photo. So that's what I was going in, into that project with. Everything else just, just turned out to be the most shocking gravy. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, it's like, whoa. <laughs> right, yeah. right. Yeah. What, what is the yeah. most challenging part for composing with for you, would you say obviously you looked at the photo you had, but mm. what would you say has been sometimes? Oh, there's a is there a blockage or something you have to fight there? You're like I'm connected to the script, I'm connected to this story, and I'm connected to the director and the creator, but I need to find something that is authentic, um, that that really connects with me, so I can bring this alive. Has there ever been something that challenged you that took a little bit more time than in the past? No. Come on, Mike, drop, y'all. We working with a a, a star. Do y'all know we talk? Do y'all know we have to take a commercial break? We had to take a commercial break. Do y'all know who we talking to? That's what she said. <laughs> she said, "You know who you talking to?" It's not like that. I'm just saying. Like, I feel like I have been extremely lucky. Mm-hmm. I, I, every project that I've worked on, I really connect with. Come on. Especially when you're saying like, you know, I'm feeling the script. I'm feeling the actors. Mm-hmm. I, I like the people that I'm working with. Yeah. When you have, when all of those things are in place, it's just like the faucet just opens on on, mm-hmm. on its own. And then the music just. Yeah. So, no. It, like, was, it yeah. wasn't a trick question at all. Yeah. I, I remember saying no to something or I say answering yes to like something like that. So yeah. I was like, you filled out? And I was like. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I need to learn. He's like, I can tell in your answer that you didn't believe that. Yeah, yeah. No, you know no. what you're doing. Trust yeah. your instinct. Yeah, yeah. And and I was yeah. like, oh, okay. He's like, no, I guess it. Don't just say no just because. <laughs> and and I was like, that's real. And yeah. it, it is because when you when you're doing the work, yeah. you are connected, like you said. It's like, no, I'm. I feel it just confident. On and its then own, yeah. it is about the right choice for accepting projects. That's what it is. That's what it is. You know? Like you know, in. In the beginning, in the beginning of my career, I definitely had to say a lot of yeses. Mm-hmm. But the, I don't know, the yeses were all like great. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and, and and it also comes down to recognizing good and genuine people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because typically the no's are for something feels off. Yeah, and you know. Yeah. That that's yeah. that's the biggest thing at this juncture of life and it's crazy, you know. I'm 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 still in my 30s. God is good. But <laughs> you know, we, it's like as I feel getting older, mm. I think it's just more wisdom in what I say you yes and no to. You can very very quickly. Man, <laughs> I've been in LA for a long time, but I also think I just have that that thing is the intuition. Yeah. And you're just like, "Nah, something's off." Yeah. And at this point in life, I don't have time to just like, oh, okay, it's off. Let me just go. And no. before you would do it, but now it's like, no, this is now. Even it's before about, I didn't do it. Yeah, I, I did you know? it once. Yeah. And I said, <laughs> did it once I, said and nah, never again. <laughs> I knew better. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. gotta do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What what's your relationship like with your with your sound team and and the and sound designers and everything mm. after you're, you know, when you're coming into the mix because you have put together this mix and what are notes, what are conversations like with them to take the film from where it's at? Are you your your music to where it's at, to where it needs to be for the final final cut. I'm sure there's a lot of conversations and, and things that are had, or do you work with the same, try to it's, just trust it? It's, it's so crazy. Okay. Like, there's typically not really that much back and forth because, okay. Talk about it. Yeah, I want to, uh, so, it's an interesting question I wanted so to see. So for quite a few projects, mm-hmm. you know, you'll kind of touch base Okay. With the sound team mm-hmm. um, before you get too deep in the weeds of composing. I see. And you kind of like can see 
where there will be moments where it'll be important for the sound team to shine yeah. and where there will be moments for the music to shine. Yeah. So, and you can kind of see that mm-hmm. pretty early on. Um, so by the time you get to like dub stage and stuff like that, there you're not going to be right. fighting on who's more important. And even if you are getting yeah. to, to that point, I've been lucky that the directors are always like, I want the music louder. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Um. So, but no, there, there, there's, there hasn't been like that much, you know, mm-hmm. kind of back and forth, kind of. That's thing. that's that's really interesting. Good to know. And it just it just shows when you're working at a certain level too. It's like when everybody's doing their job, you just know. Okay, I put you in a position to win. Take it the rest of the way, yeah. you know. And that's what we're doing now. I'm talking about in totality. Mm. You have all of these different projects. Now blink twice when we're talking mm-hmm. to people. They've they've seen the film by now. It's out. What is that like? Because that's a that's an entirely different film. And we're talking about mm-hmm. Lawman Bass Reeves. Mm-hmm. You know the Emmy Emmy nominated <laughs> composing Lawman Bass Reeves. That's mm-hmm. different than Devotion. That's mm-hmm. different than you know Whitney. What was that process like working on that film? So that's a that's a pretty. I haven't seen. I've just read read the background, seen the trailer, the script. Yeah, I'm sure. What was that like? It was incredible. Mm. It was experimental, okay. avant-garde, very, very different Yeah, from anything that people have heard me do. Wow. So. Wow. Yeah. That is a, that's a, <laughs> that's a clip. That's, that's what we need to go. Yeah. And when you say, when you say different from anything that people have heard you do. Yeah. I've seen those films. Yeah. Can you give a hint as to what I know? I know, I, you know or you want, should we, we I, just have to you see. You know, you just got to go out you and you just go got to, you have to experience this film. I, I that's all I got to say. I believe say. that. Yeah. No, when I see the trailer yeah. and even, even watching some more clips, even preparing for coming here yeah. uh, with you, yeah. I was just like, man. Yeah, man. This is an, yeah, this man. is intriguing. I'm not, yeah. what are we getting into? <laughs> yes. Now, we're not going to keep you all day, but. I do want to know some of your favorite scores mm. for film. So if you can have, if you have a list, I'm sure you've been asked before, but yeah. a couple of films, maybe give us a top three, not in any order of some of your favorite scores and, and why. Miklos Rocha, Ben-Hur, um, mm. John Williams, um, E.T., mm. um, Joe Hisashi, um, Princess Mononoke. <laughs> two, two, two. Okay, I'll, I'm gonna ask I'll about. Wait. I'm gonna no. I'm gonna ask about Ben Hur. Why mm-hmm. and, and mm-hmm. the last film you mentioned? Why? Mm-hmm. You know, I know mm-hmm. ET. We we have. You yeah, know, we're, yeah, yeah, every, that's, yeah. Everybody that's knows. Yeah. Icon. Ben Hur is a classic. Yes. I watched from my father, yes. my brother. So yes. you talk about the reasons yes. why that stands out to it's, you. It's that is that thing. It's okay. a classic that everybody yeah. watched. Yeah, especially like you know, if if you were like. Celebrating Easter or mm-hmm. things like that. That's it always iconic. showed on TV always. at that time. Always. So every year we got to sit down and watch Got to say, let's let it be written, yes. let it be done. Yes. <laughs> yes. And like yeah. that music was the first thing that started something in here where I paid attention that like, oh, that music is pretty, especially when Jesus comes on screen. Dun, yeah. dun, dun, dun. You know, it's like yeah. this, this oh, it's a yeah. moment. Dun, and yeah. I was like, oh, wow. yeah, that started it. Yeah. And then John Williams took it. <laughs> and, and then just, Joey Sashi even. So yeah. Yeah. I they yeah. The C yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't think first of all, I'm speaking from me, but I don't know if I'm gonna be able to watch <laughs> movies the same. Uh, mm. because they just when you're talking to an actual composer, now you're listening for mm. just everything. And mm-hmm. it's it's always awesome to see different things pop up. You, you talked about, obviously, we have Blink Twice that's out by the time this episode drops. Yeah. Is there anything else that you're working on currently or that we can look forward to as we go into 2025? Oh. Which is crazy to say. I, 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 I wish you, I could you, say, but it's wonderful. But that's... But see, that's what we know. <laughs> There's some yeah. good things coming down yes. the pipeline, y'all. Yes, yes. And there and is. and first of all, you know, we just want to say congratulations 
on your nomination thank for you. Emmy. We're going to be rooting for you. Thank you. Thank We're going to be you. paying attention. <laughs> and regardless of anything, it's just an honor. You know what I, I mean? Know. Like, it's just yeah. an honor. We watched the Olympics and yeah. somebody said, you know, when you see somebody come in ninth place, they came in ninth in the world. In so, the Olympics, so grab your like, Doritos yes. and sit back down yes. before you start judging, you know? Yes. But yes. with you, even the, just the nomination to be in a room amongst peers, to be recognized, yes. validated, all the way from Mike Post saying, right, you can do you this. You can do this. Yeah. Yes, you can. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Can, where can people follow you on social media or anything? You know, I'm just most active in? on Instagram. Okay. And when I mean most active, that's the only place I post. <laughs> For you sure. You know, like, For like sure. yeah. So, so yeah. Definitely. Follow Instagram if you if you want to see me post something once every. Yeah, two we months. will. I'm like the, the worst we'll, at it. <laughs> no, we'll we'll be sharing whatever we can see and yeah. doing that. But Shonda, it was amazing to have you here. We're excited. Mm -hmm. Just so much great work. If mm -hmm. you haven't seen Blink twice, go see it. Yes. Watch everything. Devotion. You should have seen that by now. Go yes. see it. And Lawman Bass Reeves, the Emmy nominated composer, Shonda Dancy. Thank you again mm -hmm. for tuning in to another episode of Posting Black. This episode again was brought to you by our title sponsor, Dolby, and we thank our supporting sponsor, Avid. Make sure you like subscribe and please share this episode with your partners and your friends and your your audience without you this would not be possible until then we'll see you next time peace out <laughs>